Hey guys, Jeff Co with Jeff Co Builds here. On today's episode, we are going to be doing some Propex fittings. Now, a lot of you are hopefully wondering, well, what's Propex? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through, we're going to break down all the different components and the different tool that you need to make these connections. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to run some water lines in Overland 1. And uh, I'll just take you guys through the whole process, show you the different bits and pieces, and show you how it works and how seamlessly this system is. Um, to start, the first thing you're going to need is an expander tool. And uh, those run from anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to well over a thousand dollars, I'm sure. And the one that I have is actually a DeWalt tool. And it's about six to seven hundred dollars, depending on if you catch it on sale or something. So let's dive into it now and we'll go ahead and run through all the different things that you're going to need. So here's the components of a Pro-PEX connection. You've got your PEX line, which this happens to be made by Wurzbro, and it is called AquaPEX, and it is specific to their uh, different fittings. And then you've got the expander ring, and then you've got your fitting, which in this case is a plug. So this is the finished assembly, and it's pretty simple to do, and you can kind of see how there's this blue line here in the center of that coupling. That's kind of showing you the the strength or the pressure that this ring is applying on the tube down onto the fitting. So it's really pretty cool. And now I'll show you a fitting and all these components kind of disassembled. So this is a brass Propex fitting. And this is actually to go from Propex to a soldered connection. This is an expander ring. Now these rings do all the work. So they expand when you first go to seat them. You use the expander tool and you expand them out. And then this will actually be over your pipe already. And you're gonna expand it, slide it over your fitting, and then in the next minute or so, it's actually gonna squeeze back to its original form and uh, put a lot of pressure on that pipe to the ridges on that fitting and make a great connection. And you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see, if you look inside of this fitting, you can see how there's a lip in there. Now that lip is gonna keep this thing from pushing off as you're expanding it. This is our expander tool. So this one's made by DeWalt, and this tool is a DCE 400. And these things, what they're gonna do is just expand that ring and I'll actually, I'll run it right now for you, watch this. So this expand, you slide the ring and the tube over it, this thing's gonna expand and it's gonna make that tube and ring larger than it normally would be and allow that fitting to slide in and then it's gonna compress back down on it. So this tool is, a key component you have to have one of these if you're gonna use this system at all so this guy here about six or seven hundred bucks depending on where you get it but really well made tool and uh, these arbors are interchangeable this one's a half inch they also with this kit that I bought they have them going all the way up to one inch so you can do three different sizes half inch three quarter and one inch now one of the cool things about Propex is it's well known across the industry that being said, you can get most things with these fittings already applied to it. So shower valves, um, faucets even, as well as like water distribution components, things like that. You can buy with Propex fittings already soldered or brazed onto it from the factory. So that makes it a really easy option and really seamless for a DIYer. So if you don't have strengths in soldering, you can do a whole system without touching a torch, flux, any of that. So that is really awesome. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is we are going to be plumbing this guy, which is a hot and cold um, water hose bib, really. And we're gonna use this for our outdoor shower as well as a wash down hose, whatever you wanna call it. And this guy is solid brass and it has a regular garden fitting here hot, cold, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
make my own um, outdoor shower that'll just thread right onto the garden hose fitting here. And then the only thing about this is I could not get it in Propex. So this, which is different, you'll notice, this is a standard PEX fitting. So we're gonna have to convert from PEX and then we'll get back into Propex. But some things you just can't, it seems very difficult to find anyway. And maybe they do make this, but Amazon didn't have it. So this is what I ended up with. And this has just got standard PEX fittings. So we're gonna use a PEX um, ring system to connect to this guy. And then we'll go from there on with our regular Pro PEX fittings. So this is in the roster for assembly today, as well as hopefully plumbing out our shower valve, which we're doing something kind of fun with it too, so stay tuned. This is the box that I've essentially made out of an Arctic Turn door and some starboard. And this is where we're gonna house our uh, garden hose, as well as the hose bib. So those two holes there is where our hose bib will line up and I will go ahead and get it installed now. All right, so there it is. Our Woodford hose bib mounted inside of the starboard box. That is mounted on the rear quarter of the truck with a lockable door so nobody steals our water. And then our garden hose will hopefully be able to just kind of coil up in the box here with it and keep everything that's gonna be wet in this compartment. All right, so this product here is made by Oopnor. It is a Propex Aquapex line with an insulating sleeve on it. So the reason I'm running this is just that way we'll hold temperature more consistently and we're running this for hot and cold. So they're not uh, blue or red right now. So I'm having to keep track of which one's hot and which one's cold. But this way we'll get an insulating value on our pipes and hold our temperature more consistently for hot and cold and I'm gonna be running this through the entire build. So we're gonna go ahead and take our ring here. We're gonna insert our ring. I'm gonna try to scoot you a little closer here. And then we take our tool. And then we just hold this in place for a few seconds while it kind of starts to shrink back. And there's these cleats on the sides of this fitting that you're gonna push it all the way up to and that means that it's fully seated. And then after a few seconds, it's a good connection. So that's your standard connection. The other thing that you'll notice is on the head of this unit, when it rotates, it's actually, or when it expands, it's actually rotating. That process is very important to get a good crimp on this. If it were to not rotate, it would unevenly open up this joint and actually can cause some leaks. So that's a good crimp there. So we're gonna do the same thing to this fitting. We're gonna insert our ring and then we're gonna expand. Meanwhile, the expander is rotating as it expands, do that a few times. Then we take our fitting, push our fitting in until it's seated. And now we hold it there for a few seconds while we wait for this to shrink back down. So there's two completed fittings in the matter of, you know, you could do this real fast. You could do this in 15 seconds if you weren't trying to film it. And uh, these are good watertight, airtight fittings. All right, so here's our finished product at the back of the starboard box that houses the hot and cold water spigot. And you can see what I've done is I've actually cut a few pieces here and here of the insulating material to go ahead and insulate the last six inches of that pipe that was exposed before. So now we've got a fully insulated pipe with good connections and we're ready to move on to the next part. Now I ran some pipe up through the chase, which I'll show you here. 
I brought it up from behind this wall here actually, which this wall has a false back. So it runs up through that chase and then it comes across the front side of the refrigerator, continues down. And then I've actually got these three legs stopped in the corner. Now, if you're wondering what the third one is, that is actually for the drinking water. So there's three pipes total, drinking, hot, and cold. So after the pipes come out of this corner, they continue down this chase, and then they come into my main functions wall here. And once they're into that wall, then they continue right here where they're, they'll tee out and they'll actually tie into this shower valve for the hot and the cold on each side. Now, if you're wondering why my shower valve is on the ceiling, I placed it here for a couple reasons. A, my kids can't reach it very easily. And B, I was watching a video by a guy who had built an overland ambulance and he had made a storage bin above his head in the toilet, essentially. And it didn't interfere with his head clearance. Now, this, to me, makes good sense because when you're sitting here, the toilet will be here. So when you're sitting here, there's tons of wasted space there. So by putting my mixer valve up here, I don't have to run into it on this wall. So this is the adjacent wall. And you can see that the water line comes down and that is where the elbow is that'll stick out. And then there'll be a hose that'll loop down and then it'll come back into this blocking here and where that blocking is, is where my shower head will be. So anyways, that is about it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't be afraid to subscribe, like this video, um, follow along. Every weekend I'm trying to do something and uh, trying to get some new content out there for you. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time.